know about world music? Few labels have generated more controversy both in academia and in the public realm than the term world music. It reflected the emergence of a new kind of music, or world beat, that could only be accessed by stepping beyond one's own culture and drawing upon all of them. The term world music was first conceived to fulfill a purely functional role in the record industry, to come up with a marketable title on which to put their recordings. However, its history reflects a certain irony, for though the original meaning carried an intended inclusive connotation relating to the removal of cultural, political, and musical barriers, it has since been used to differentiate and exclude certain artists, peoples, and musical styles from most European and American music. I seek to find how world music has been socially constructed through the different meanings musicians attach to and receive from participating in it here at the University of Illinois. Has it influenced the original perception of inclusion, encouraging the breaking down of musical and cultural barriers, or has it built up the perception of an exclusive barrier, one that articulates the musical other? First, I sought my answer from a well-known ethnomusicologist here on campus, one that has traveled far and wide for the research he teaches at the University of Illinois. Can you state your full name and your <laughs> occupation? <laughs> I like okay. To... Okay. My full name, uh, my name is Tom Torino. Okay. I'm an ethnomusicologist here at the University of Illinois. I have been for 25 years. Okay. From your personal experience, how would you define world and world music? Okay. This is a problem. This is um, the big one. Well, okay. I changed the name of my 133s for a long time. I changed it to the introduction to the anthropology of music. Oh. I think the designation world music is somewhat bogus, in the sense that all music is in the world. Yes. So Bach is world music, Mozart's world music. But the term was devised just like ethnomusicology versus musicology. Mm -hmm. So the classical music of Europe is musicology, mm -hmm. yeah. and then everything, everything else in else the world is the other. Yeah, is the other. Yeah. Well, world works the same way. Yeah. So it's just an othering device, and it says non cot. What it mean? What I guess what it originally meant was non cosmopolitan. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, indigenous. Uh, well, that just it? you're right. Just other. Other, yeah. Kind of indiscriminately. So it's not a very good category. So if you're going to take, I like to take words literally. Yeah. As, you know, and so if world is world, uh, then all music, either all music is world music or no music is world music, yeah. and, except for if it was music of the spheres. And in which, and so if it's all world music, then the designation means nothing. It doesn't designate anything because mm -hmm. it designates everything. everything. So it's kind of to that designation. I think it's. Okay. Um, world music and world beat were marketing terms yeah. in the 1980s. Uh, so that this just, you know, it used to be in the record shops you would go in and there would be this bin of international records. World music has become like that. Okay. So it's kind of a marketing label, both for courses and records and other stuff. So it's not a very accurate. Yeah, just in general. It, it's too general. too general. It's either everything's in the world or it's all world music or nothing is world music. I agree. Torino spoke firmly about his research in Peru and one ethnomusicologist in particular that had a great impact on him. This very book, <laughs> uh, Bruno Nettle, Theory and Method in Ethnomusicology. I had this book in my knapsack and I had another book by a guy named Alan Miriam in my knapsack and I decided, okay, I'm going to go to Peru and see if I can teach myself how to do ethnomusicological fieldwork. <laughs> so I had my book and I was going, okay, now what do I do? Yeah. Um, that's what I did. That led me to my next interview with an equally well-known ethnomusicologist. Please state your full name and occupation. Okay. Well, uh, Bruno Nettle. Uh, I'm a professor emeritus at the University of Illinois, and I guess I would say I'm a I'm a musicologist and an anthropologist specializing in ethnomusicology. Okay. Gradually, you find out that the, the whole concept of music is a something which is questionable as an intercultural thing. In other words, many societies don't have the, don't have the concept of music or a word for it. Oh wow! Uh, oh, I, didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I know like all yeah. societies have some form of music, but they well, don't call something it that. that sounds to us like music. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but the, but they may not. Now that uh, 
Well, this is an important uh, point because uh, what they what they uh, may have, for example, in some cases, is terms and ideas, uh, concepts of different genres, and they don't bu they don't combine them as we do, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that may actually lead somehow to a notion of the origins of music. You know, we talk about the, how did music originate. Well, uh, I think maybe music didn't originate as just one thing. A lot of different things. Yeah. And only in some cultures, like ours, Is did they get combined and into yeah, this and overall concept of music. Where, yeah. uh, and we have an enormously broad concept of mm -hmm. music because uh, if you go to a concert in the Kreiner Center, no matter what sounds you have, if they're done on the stage, they'll be called music. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. No matter. <laughs> you know, in other words, it's, it's, it's not. Yeah. It's not that you, you can't tell music from the way it sounds. You can tell it only from the social context. Yeah. From your personal experience, um, how would you define world and world music? World. Like uh, from the terminology of world music, how it's like become this encompassing like. Well, how like much as you were saying, like you put something on the stage and we call it music. Oh. Well, oh, I see. Well, I don't know. Oh, How do you feel about that term? You mean w world music as in, in the, the the popular music style called world, world music? World music, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, it's it's uh, what it, what it usually. Well, I think what it usually amounts to is uh, is some kind of fusions of different musics. Yeah, uh, definitely. But to but you but but I, but I guess well, I mean that's that's that's. It's not a particularly good term, yeah. But people, that's what I'm but arguing. <laughs> but that's but it is a term used. Yeah. But when if we talk here about a course called Introduction to World Music, we mean musics of the world's cultures. Okay. Uh, and actually, when I came here, uh, we introduced a course with that name, yeah. Musics of the world's cultures, and uh, okay, I think uh, and world music came. Well, I don't know. Somehow, musics of the world's cultures didn't fit into the spaces that they gave you on the. <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> on the yeah, on the screen. Uh, but yeah, I think a lot of people who uh, take this course, Introduction to World Music, think it's going to be the the kind of music, uh, popular music, which is called world music. That is fusions, and and yeah. that, that I think that is a, that's a kind of music which people ought to include in their yeah. contemplation. Uh, but then there are all these other things too. Exactly. From the opinions of the professors, I saw those of the students at the University of Illinois. Here you are listening to Professor Torino's 252 Ethnomusicology Performance Ensemble playing the Mbira. Initially, I gave out a general survey to these seven students and to 14 students in Torino's 133 Introduction to World Music course. I asked them to describe their re reasons and expectations for taking these courses as well as any significant experiences they participated in. It was striking to see the contrast between these 133's prominent reason to receive credit or fulfill a gen ed requirement, as opposed to these 252's desire for music and playing an instrument. Other shared discourses were the opportunity to learn about the world, different cultures, and a couple students mentioned Tom Torino explicitly as a reason for taking these courses. In regards to a significant experience, one of my favorite responses was from a student in the 252 chorus. Quote, every time musicians fall into a groove together, heightens the enjoyability of performing, unquote. This aspect was shared amongst almost every member of the ensemble and one I was able to witness myself. Here is the first shot I got of the group performing their Mbira piece for me. As they start their performance, every individual musician has a part within the whole ensemble. As one student mentioned, you will see the groove falling into place. Next, I asked the students to define the world in relation to world music, as well as how they relate to their definition. Both courses express shared discourse in topics of music, culture, countries or regions, American or non-American, non-Western, cosmopolitan, exotic, the world, the planet, and universalism in terms like all or everywhere. Here are a few definitions from each course. In News 133, students said, In Muse 2, 
252 student size. Almost all of the students agreed on the ambiguity or encompassing aspect of the term. Therefore, I would argue that they perceive the inclusive connotation. Last but not least, I conducted a focus group with these three individuals who have participated in either Tom Terminal's Muse 133 or Muse 252 course. Can you guys go around and say your name and what world music course you are in? My name is James Hathaway. I took World Music 133. Sweet. I'm Claire Johnson. I took Music 133, and I'm in the Imperial Ensemble, which is Music 252 or something. Cool. My name is Randy Potkin. I took Music 133 also. Do you guys think of world music where in the world do you like index to or locate it? Can you point to? Um, <laughs> <this whole> thing. <laughs> <laughs> so everything like including Europe or not in there? No, or? not yeah. I don't think about Europe or Russia really. Same. That doesn't come I, up. I think of Europe as new wave. Um, <laughs> anything new that we get musically in the West is mainly from Europe. Um, anything that you associate with old culture, I mean, you are going to associate with most likely. Africa, India. Yeah. That's a really interesting question, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's very telling. And South America for a couple of us, you know? I mean, yeah, definitely. Not so much Australia. Nobody really thinks of Australia. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I like completely agree, basically. I think of like Africa, South America, and India. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I feel like it's because they're culturally so different. Yeah. So uh -huh. I think of like their different music. Yeah. yeah. Europe. Europe, Australia, you know, like these these places. Like, yeah, Western well, countries. Not this place so much. I don't even know what goes on in Russia, really. <laughs> Neither do I. But it's weird, it's though. Huge. Like, there's this folk dancing community yeah. on campus, and, like, they mm -hmm. do a lot of Eastern European folk dances, and, like, there, there's certain types of music that go along with that. And, like, so that's also a really deep tradition, but yeah. I, I don't I'm, think about that as. I'm most curious to see what music's going to come out of Antarctica. <laughs> I'm still waiting. Well, yeah. so waiting. Okay, and my last question um, is like, because of the course, you would make these associations. Like, would you have before said India if you didn't learn about India, or is are these things that you knew before or would think before? These are probably things that the course helped embed in my brain. Um, okay. Yeah. Definitely. For sure. Um, yeah, it gives you a whole different feel for the map, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true for me too. Yeah, I think I thought of it in terms of that location before, but now I know a lot more about like the music itself, and actually just like a lot about the like culture in different countries. Yeah, definitely. Now everybody, put your hands on the world. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> My research shows that the term world music is problematic for the students and faculty at the University of Illinois and that it is very ambiguous. They seem to favor the more inclusive connotation, while it is largely the music industry, more so than the musicians themselves, that follow any exclusive distinction. And what this distinction fails to properly acknowledge is that the otherness is not a fixed category, but shifting relative to individual perspectives. As for the perspectives on this campus, it seems to be a meaningless term. Oh, this is kind of a cool thing. This is a water whistle jar. <laughs> so if I put water in here and you, you, you spill it, you tilt it this way, this, this vessel fills up, forces the air out through a whistle, and it, it whistles. That's cool. That's an old Andean instrument. And then these are the Andean flute. This is the kena notched flute. 